uh, I don't know if you still have your tape recorder with you or. I just uh, I got I got okay. it going on my phone. So here we go. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. Okay, this is uh, Dan Dorfman, uh, investigator for Los Santos uh, District Attorney's Office. It is November twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. Uh, this is in regards to the uh, Grove Street investigation uh, warrant served on November 12th, 2018 uh, by the San Andreas State Police and the uh, Major Crimes Unit. Uh, sir, you understand that at this moment in time, this uh, statement is being recorded? Yes, sir. And we have your consent to record? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and could, for the record, could you please state your uh, your name and your position? Senior Trooper Kurt Leonard, SASP. Thank you very much, uh, Senior Trooper. Uh, would you be, uh, could you raise your right hand, please? Yes, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And you understand that at this moment in time, the uh, any statement that you make that's false on uh, this witness statement uh, could be grounds for perjury. Dispatch two sixteen. Yes, sir. Show me ten forty one. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Now, Senior Trooper, could you please uh, describe to me a little bit about your position here with the SASP? Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, FTO, uh, head of the Air Division. Um, How you doing there, Felzarn? I've been a trooper with the SASP for going on almost a year now. Uh, I think I'm just one month shy. Um, I patrol the streets, uh, and uh, when needed, I uh, get in the air for air support and uh, for certifying those who I feel are up to the task of being air certified. And are you uh, are you the head of the air division uh, here for uh, yes, San Andreas State Police? All right. Yes, sir. I took over after uh, Captain Craig Dale stepped down. Okay. And uh, could you tell us a little bit, uh, tell me a little bit about the, uh, what is the role of an air unit uh, in typical operations when it's being used? Uh, well, we have an, uh, basically it's an AS-350 B-2 A-Star. Uh, it's specially equipped with uh, FLIR, uh, which is uh, advanced um, if you're familiar with FLIR, it, uh, it's heat signatures, essentially. It picks up on those. Uh, it also is equipped with uh, one uh, night vision camera. Um, <laughs> between you and me, it's a piece of shit. Uh, the FLIR is much better. Uh, and then we also have the high-definition camera with 8x uh, optical zoom. Um, <clears throat> As an air support unit, uh, depending on the situation, if we have a string of um, robberies, uh, we can put an air unit in the sky to kind of give us a little bit broader of an area to to uh, cover, to be able to see any, you know, anybody fleeing from one of those 1090s, a 1090 being a robbery. Um, and also giving air support to operations uh, in case, uh, you know, just to give kind of a coverage in case somebody uh, starts approaching the ground units um, and give them a uh, heads up if needed. And when you fly, are you typically flying solo or do you usually have a co-pilot with you? I have more hours uh, going solo. Uh, I have had co-pilots, um, but I uh, typically, uh, due to the uh, availability of units, I am usually patrolling solo. And being up in the air, does that uh, does that allow you in these types of situations to uh, using the technology that you talked about, the flare system, you know, the the thermo uh, heat signature capability? as well as the uh, the eight zoom lens uh, that you've got. Does that allow you to, to fairly well track uh, suspects as they uh, move about uh, in the scenes as, as well as in vehicles? Yes, sir. Not to sound conceited, but I'm exceptional at my job when I'm in the air. I'm a much better pilot than I am a driver. And w would you say that... Uh, that use, utilizing these tools, you become an expert in utilizing these tools to track suspects? 
Absolutely. And about how many hours do you have in the air? Mm, I could probably, in this city, I could probably confidently say I have... Potentially 150 to 200 hours. I'd say uh, that's a significant amount of time up in the air because you guys don't oh, run uh, air units all the me, time. It's give, it, you bring yeah, them out. Yeah, give me on, a second. Yeah, give me one second. Let me just check something. Ladies and gentlemen, for the record, uh, the uh, the trooper is now looking at his phone. He's uh, getting ready to line up his putt. Uh, he's got a uh, he's got about 18 feet left to right break. Looks like he's uh, he's got his thumb right now on the meter, and uh, we're all we're all waiting for the uh, for the putt to occur. Unknown man from nowhere. Uh, I would say it's going to be closer to one hundred to one hundred and fifty. Okay, closer to one hundred to one hundred and fifty. I, I mean, that's a, that's a significant amount of time, far more than anyone else uh, has here in uh, in the city. Correct? I mean, I'd, hence yeah. Your, if uh, you were position. to, um... yes, sir. Uh, I'm just coming in, see what's up. Uh, just giving him a statement based on the, um, uh, my my role during the raid. Oh, I got you. All right, I'll get that here. Uh, if you were to hypothetically say eight hours a month uh, times twelve months, that's roughly roughly ninety six hours. Let's just go with 100 hours at this point. Yeah, uh, it's a very significant amount of with, time. Because, yeah, uh, a significant amount, yes. And, and were you an officer in uh, in other cities, other county? You kind of alluded to uh, that you might have some additional experience beyond just the uh, San Andreas State Police. I have experience as, a, as an LEO. Um, in other states like ours, very similar to our state. All right. Great. And I, I appreciate that. Um, okay. So let's get on to the, uh, let's get to the event specifically uh, about uh, the November the 12th. So the assistant director, uh, you had told me, uh, called you in and what did he ask you to do? He asked me to give air support for the uh, operation that they had that that night. And do you recall what you were told about the operation? I was given basic information, uh, just that SWAT would be uh, raiding uh, a few... Uh, domiciles um, south of the city and if my air support if I if basically if I could give them air support during that operation all right and, and you understood air support uh, what you, your uh, your role in that is keeping an eye on things giving uh, troopers heads up warnings about uh, about individuals that might be approaching them or trying to flee an area is that right Yes, exactly. Okay. So uh, as the operation kicks off, walk me through uh, what you do at that particular time. Um, to the best of my recollection, <clears throat> when I came on duty, uh, there was uh, a briefing. Uh, essentially, I came in. The, the, the SWAT unit had more information um, because they, uh, they had been planning this. Uh, I was called in to give that air support, um, but the briefing was essentially that they would be separating into two, two groups, one on the Forum side, one on the Grove Street cul-de-sac side, and if I could basically uh, meander back and forth between the two sites, uh, just uh, giving them information uh, on anything that I saw out of place or anything that uh, could potentially uh, be detrimental to the operation. And where did the uh, operation begin? 
I mean, uh, as far as uh, was it was it in the forum uh, the forum sites or was it uh, along Grove Street? As I said, the uh, the teams there were two teams and they split up. Uh, one unit took Grove, one unit took the forum. Okay. All right, and uh, so you're and you were floating back and forth uh, between the two. Uh, did you uh, correct? Were there any calls to you from the ground uh, during the time that you had? air coverage and you're watching uh, things were there any direct calls uh, to you from any units on the ground asking you to specifically watch or look into something uh there were a couple of vehicles that approached uh grove uh at what point uh i if i recall correctly um uh, i believe i received a direct call uh you know asking me to uh to keep an eye on on said vehicles uh there were also other vehicles that came into the area uh most of which were uh just one-offs uh i remember uh Badaka was one individual that came through and a coco kale was also another individual that came through <clears throat> excuse me and um but they they didn't they weren't they didn't turn out to be anything as far as any other direct calls it was just you know to uh give them support uh you know that they were breaching all right so the uh so when you observed uh miss coco kale uh drive through the area uh how did you see her what what uh what vision were you using at that point in time to identify her um actually when it came when uh coco kale came through um i do recall that uh there was a ground unit i believe it was 219 i'm not 100 percent sure but he uh he followed her that, uh, uh i was in Trooper parker 219 or is uh, that that's uh, that's two uh that's thomas he thomas, was just sorry. in here yeah yeah, um, but uh, I was en route to his location. He's the he's actually the one that saw her, and uh, I broke uh, once he said that uh, he said that it was basically just her and that he got her. So I, in I made a, a judgment call that uh, she was probably not going to be a mastermind of of uh, terrorism. Uh, so I broke and responded back to the forum and uh, Grove. Uh, to keep coverage roger so so uh trooper trooper thomas was helping with a uh set up a perimeter then around the swat team Correct. to uh were there Correct. unmarked units on the ground yes sir i believe the director had now this my memory in my old age uh i be believe the, the director right? had an suv assistant director i'm McBride. sorry Assistant I'm director sorry, yes, McBride. assistant mm-hmm. director, correct. Assistant director McBride, I believe, had an SUV, and uh, Parker, uh, he had a unmarked Crown Vic, if I recall correctly. Do you recall where they were positioned at? Um, assistant director McBride had set up a position uh, on, hold on a second. He had set up a position on Brogue Avenue. Okay. Parker, I had seen him on Grove Street. And I believe they were kind of floating back and forth, but for the most part, that's where I remember them most of all. All right. And, uh, okay, so let's, uh, so that was uh, that was Coco. You said Mr. Bonica, uh also appeared on scene. Uh, was he picked up by the perimeter, or did he actually breach? The, he was, he, yes, he was in the perimeter. He was not actually near Forum. Neither neither of those individuals were actually near the Forum or Grove. They were just probably about two or three blocks outside of that, uh, outside of that area. All right. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about... Um...
Tell me, uh, what you, did you observe any individuals uh, enter the Grove Street area uh, beyond, uh, you know, what, what might be classified as local traffic? Did you, uh, did you witness yes. anyone, uh, anyone enter the area and go into any of the houses that were, um, that were to be raided, so they were going to be off limits? Yes, I did. Tell me a little bit about what you observed. I witnessed a an emperor uh, driving. I believe it came from. Hold on, let me let me check the street name. <laughs> you see, it looks all, all fancy. Right, to the best of my recollection, it came up. It came. It was coming west on Carson. Went south on Brogue and then made a left-hand eastbound turn onto uh, Grove Street. Pulled into the cul-de-sac uh, and was uh, parked in front of the house on the most northern northern side of that cul-de-sac. Okay, the house that's on the most northern side. Okay. And Correct. and uh, what did you? Um... What did you observe as that uh, vehicle pulled around? I observed a Mr. Jack Jackson and a number one male, uh, unidentified at the time, uh, go into what I know now as Mr. Jackson's uh, home. All right. Uh, how many individuals did you say you saw? Was it, was it one, two, or three? It sounded like at least two. Were there three or it two? It was two. All right. I and, only saw uh, two myself. Okay. Uh, and then you saw these individuals go into, uh, what was the, what was going over the radio? Do you recall at the time? Um, at the time I had, I had seen Mr. Jackson's emperor uh, coming into the area. I believe I radioed in and asked if, uh, they were, I let ground units know. Um, and they basically said they, keep an eye on it um so i did um i witnessed mr jackson uh, back into his home uh, actually you know what i'm i'm just going to say that he was at his he, he pulled into the driveway of his home um well uh out front of the home uh i witnessed him and the other gentleman go into the house i witnessed mr jackson come out of his house uh, a couple of times and go to his car. Um, and then that? I also witnessed the other individual, the type one male. He came out of the house, went around to the back side of the house, uh, paused for a few moments and then came back around to the front side of the house. Uh, I did not, well, I was not able to pick up on the camera whether or not he dropped anything. It was my suspicion at the time that maybe he was dropping things. Um, because it just seemed odd and peculiar behavior to come from the house, go to the back side of the house, and then back around to the front. Either that, or he was uh, potentially looking out because that that home backs up to that little side road uh, between Grove Street and the Mega Mall. So I don't know if I would be speculating at this point as to what he was that? actually doing. Okay. And uh, was that? Um... Did, did you see the uh, when Mr. Jackson was running back and forth? Did you see the trunk on his vehicle open up? I did. All right. And uh, when the vehicle took off, uh, tell me what you recall about that. Hey, Chris. Um, I radioed in and asked if uh, I should follow him. I was told to. Uh, I followed him over to the motel uh give me one second i'll give you a street name it's going to be the motel at little bighorn in jamestown is that the uh billingsgate uh, motel i believe it is and uh, where did you see them pull up in that uh, that hotel? Uh, I pulled in from the uh, west side 
Um, and I saw Mr. Jackson get out. Uh, it appeared that he went to his trunk and then went inside. Um, I'm not, I cannot remember if the trunk opened or not, but, uh, he did go inside the building from that point. Um, did he make a few trips or, uh, was there anybody else around with him? I did not see the other individual that I had previously seen on Grove. Uh, it was at that time, once he entered that hotel, that, uh, there was a, uh, kind of a big storm that came through. Uh, all visibility was lost uh, for, for some time. Um, and then, uh, so I, I made my way back to Mission Row um, and uh, once, once the storm had passed, I had made my way back to uh, hey, the, the scene. Um, I believe at that point, uh, uh, I did not witness Mr. Jackson's car there or uh, I did not see him come back out of that hotel room. Uh, uh, he he might have been a, he might have sl slipped out somehow that I did not I was unaware of. Did uh, did the uh, you radioed obviously this to the uh, to the units on the ground? Um, what was the director's uh, uh, instructions to you? To keep an eye on the uh, motel. All right. Uh, and, uh, so after they, uh, you kept an eye on the motel, uh, did the other units eventually join at the hotel, uh, other, other ground units to help you keep an eye and observe? Yes, sir. Uh, it was, it was pretty much at the end of, uh, the operations on the forum and in Grove. Uh, so once I witnessed what I did, um, it was the in, per instruction of the ground units to uh, swarm that hotel. And uh, when when you observed from your your point of view, when you saw Mr. Jackson get out of the vehicle and move towards the hotel, uh, did he go up to was was his room on the first floor, or the second floor? Did, did you see which when room I approached he went in? No. When I approached the hotel, I was coming from west to east, which is how he entered. Um, and <clears throat> I was on the south side of the hotel when he walked in. I was not... Uh, if if you're in the air coming from west to east on that hotel, the mm -hmm. opening and all of the rooms are going to be on the east side. So once I was coming from the west side, I was not able to come back... Uh, far east enough to swing the bird around and actually make uh, contact visually to see which room he went into. All right, but you know he went. Uh, you know he went to the east side, where the room entrances are. I'm 100 percent certain that he went into that motel. All right, and is there any other way out of that complex, uh, without uh, that would have been without your observation? I mean, not without my the, observation at the, the storm, time, right? We're not talking about the yeah, storm. Yeah, not without incident, my. But... Yeah, he. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I. Uh, it was at the time once I realized that he was coming in from the uh, going on on the east side, and I did not have visual contact. I enabled the flur uh, for the heat signature, <clears throat> and I was able to see him once he actually went around to the east side of the building, that's heat signature disappeared. Now, once you once an individual goes inside that building, that heat signature is not going to be uh, accurate any longer. But right. there was never any point that that heat signature left any other direction of that hotel. I would have been able to pick that up. So, so it was reasonable at that point in time. You had every reason to believe that uh, you witnessed Mr. Jackson pull up to his hotel, his, his personal residence which was about to be raided somehow he breaches the perimeter he's observed by yourself as well as ground units uh he removes items from his his uh place of business with another individual or i mean sorry it was his home on grove street with another individual yes. and then uh, proceeds to put those piece those items back into his trunk while the other individual moves items and puts them potentially in the backyard or over uh, 
Yeah, or or maybe he's just keeping watch. It's hard to tell. Then they get into the vehicle, Correct. speed off. You're following them, keeping radio contact with uh, the ground units, and you follow him over to the east side entrance of this hotel, the Billingsgate on Little Bighorn. At which point, you, your statement is that uh, you were on the south side of the, uh, as the air unit. You could not. You lost observation on him as he went to the east side where the room entrances are at which point you quickly flipped on you realized you weren't going to be able to uh, keep contact there so you quickly flipped on your uh, your infrared your heat signature you tracked his heat signature until it disappeared which was an indication that he went into one of the rooms in the uh, in this motel yes sir all right I uh, when you uh, when you notified uh, the director uh, that uh, what you had observed, he uh, your testimony is that he indicated for you to keep an eye on the uh, hotel. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, if I understand correctly, there was a, a brief storm uh, where uh, we lost sight. Um, everyone kind of lost sight, and when you returned to yeah. the scene, uh, you had to land for a brief moment. Uh, when you returned to the scene. Um, the individuals, the subjects were still nowhere to be found. They may have been inside, may have been outside, but at that particular time, you did not see any additional, uh, any additional view of those, uh, individuals. Is that right? Mm -mm. Hey, Can I help uh, Larry, you? Let me go, uh, oh, I was going to see if you want me to go help him real quick. Uh, give me a second. And then, uh, okay. Sorry. So, so we lost we lost eyes on those individuals. They may have been still inside the facility, but you're. Uh, do you have any doubt at all that they were moving materials from the uh, residence on uh, north side of Grove Street, identified as Jack Jackson's residence, to uh, to the hotel, to some room within that hotel? Yes. Uh, um, <clears throat> yep, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we lost we lost visibility uh, when we regained visibility on the hotel or motel. Uh, Mr. Jackson's car was not there, and uh, when the uh, team decided to uh, move in, uh, there was no individuals on scene. Approximately how long before uh, between when Mr. Uh, Jackson was observed moving materials to the hotel? Uh, was the call made by the uh, director to uh, to move in, uh, you know, due to uh, exigent circumstances? Uh, it was it, it was pretty much immediate. Once we regained visibility, uh, the operations on Forum and Grove had come to a conclusion, and it was at that point they decided to move on the hotel. Uh, that was probably it was it was it was. Very, very soon after visibility was regained on the they within it's hard to it's, honestly it's hard to remember because uh, it was a long operation. Uh, it could have been I, I don't even want to speculate on time honestly it was it was it was it was quick though okay, fair enough, but it it was. It was uh, it was reasonably uh, fast. I mean, you were keeping, you were doing your best to keep observation. You knew that Mr. Jackson had 100%. Mr. Jackson had, and uh, possibly another individual or more, had uh, moved into the uh, moved materials into uh, into the hotel. Yes, sir. All right. Is there uh, anything else of significance that? Uh, did you observe at all any time Mr. Archie Cooper um, around the Grove Street area or down in the uh, with Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Uh, the only individuals that I ever saw were I briefly saw uh, I briefly saw Miss Kale's vehicle. 
Uh, during the operation, I had made a swing over red line and saw uh, what appeared to be Mr. Uh, or Walter Fopp standing outside along with uh, a cannon. Uh, and those were basically the only individuals outside of the SASP that I physically saw other than Mr. Jackson and the unknown uh, individual type one male that was with all right. And did you, um, prior to the director making the call to move in on the hotel, did he, did he ask for your confirmation on what you saw over the radio? I gave my confirmation with, uh, hundred percent certainty. Okay. All right. Uh, great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the recording then. Uh, tr Trooper, I appreciate your, uh, your time and making this statement. Thank you.